Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, hold your ovations. Uh, glad you could uh, make some time to attend. Uh, again, this is uh, going to be on choosing the correct wireless microphones and the technology behind them. We're going to start off uh, the first part of the presentation with a little bit of microphone technology. It will aid you in, in deciding which microphone is going to be best for your application. We'll open up the, the lines halfway through the presentation after the tech side uh, for any questions you have, uh, technical related, and then we'll move on to product overview and how what we learned on the technical side relates to our product offering. Uh, it's not working, Tyler. Oh, one second, we're having a glitch in advancing the slides. One moment, please. I'll have to click here. There we go. Okay. So first of all, how does a microphone work? Um, like headphones and loudspeakers, the microphone is a transducer. In other words, an energy converter. It senses acoustic energy sound, and it translates it into electrical energy, then amplified and sent to a loudspeaker or a headphone. The sound picked up by a microphone transducer should emerge from the speaker transducer with no significant changes or colorization. This is, of course, depending on the frequency and characteristics of a mic. So really, when you think about a microphone, it's just a very small speaker. So there is a diaphragm. It does pick up sound. It moves. It creates electrical energy. Um, and again, gets transmitted to an amplifier, amplified, and then sent to a speaker. So they are quite similar uh, speakers and microphones in how they operate. There are two main types of microphones, dynamic microphones as well as condenser microphones. We'll kind of go into the, what the differences are here next. So we'll start with dynamic. Dynamic microphones can be considered uh, as similar, as I mentioned, to conventional loudspeakers in most respects. Uh, both have a diaphragm or cone uh, with a voice coil, a long coil of wire that goes around that voice coil. Both have a magnetic system uh, with this coil and its gap. The difference is how they are used. Uh, with the speaker, again, current flows from the uh, current from the amplifier throws, uh, flows through the coil. The magnetic field created by the current flowing through the voice coil interacts with a magnetic field of the speaker's magnet, uh, forcing coil and attached cone to move back and forth, producing sound output. Uh, and the speaker uh, works in the exact opposite way. If we look at the picture uh, up here, we've got the uh, diaphragm up here. And in a microphone application, the sound hits this diaphragm, vibrates the diaphragm. Uh, you see the magnet right here. You've got your voice coil right here. As it moves, it sends uh, electrical energy out uh, the leads. That is then amplified through a preamp mixer, amplifier, and then through your speakers. So the same thing would happen in, in a speaker, just in the opposite flow. In a microphone, it goes in this way. In a speaker, it goes out this way. Uh, condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are a little bit different. Uh, sometimes they're called capacitor microphones. Uh, they use a lightweight membrane and a fixed plate that act as opposite sides of a capacitor. Sound pressure against this thin polymer film causes it to move. This move it changes capacitance of the circuit, creating uh, a change in electrical output. Um, so you can see that right now you get a front plate, a back plate. One important key is this impedance converter, this FET. Basically, a condenser microphone requires uh, power in order to operate. So when you're looking at certain amplifiers, uh, you have to make sure that they would have a phantom power circuitry. Of course, in a wireless uh, world, the, the phantom power is taken care of uh, with a battery that is in the microphone transmitter pack or handheld pack. But just as well as thumb, uh, the thing about is if you're using a wired microphone per se, you have to have that phantom power or the microphone will not operate. So one thing to, to be aware of. Uh, condenser microphones are preferred for a very uniform frequency response and the ability to respond with clarity to transient sounds. The low mass of the diaphragm permits, ex uh, sorry, permits extended high frequency response, while the nature of the design also ensures a standing low frequency pickup. The resulting sound is natural, clear, clean, with excellent transients and detail. So looking at the difference between uh, dynamic and condenser microphones, Dynamics tend to have on higher SPL handling. So again, in loud environments, uh, you know, for an example, if you were going to put a mic on a kick drum or something like that that is quite loud, or maybe some kind of musical instrument, a trumpet, 
Uh, a dynamic generally can handle higher SPL than a condenser. They're a little bit more durable. So when looking at wireless microphones, think of the environment. Uh, is it going into a school? Uh, does it have the potential to be dropped? And as a rule of thumb, again, dynamics are less prone to damage from dropping and abuse. Overall, dynamic microphones, uh, because of their uh, simplistic circuitry, are a little bit more inexpensive as compared to condensers. Additionally, uh, they are less susceptible to temperature changes, moisture, hot and cold environments. So they're, they're a little bit more forgiving in that, in that, in that aspect. Uh, condensers. Uh, higher sensi uh, sensitivity. This is quite key. So what that means is that if you're trying to pick up a, a quieter uh, a recording, let's say a choir or something like that, or sometimes it's uh, a person speaking a little bit further from the microphone, they're a lot more sensitive to picking up sounds around them. They are, uh, as I mentioned before, condensers are a little bit more fragile, so a little bit more care needs to be taken in their handling. Uh, on to handling, uh, lower handling noise uh, is, is a trait of condenser microphones. So when handling noise is picking them up, movement, touching, and things like that. Again, they do require phantom power, and as I mentioned, in the wireless world, that's uh, given to them by the onboard power or battery that is in the transmitter or handheld part of the microphone. But in a wired world, you definitely have to provide phantom power to the, to the units. Overall, they can be a little bit more pricey, uh, so be aware of that. But they do have a wider dynamic range. And of course, dynamic range is from your quiet and quietest sound to the loudest sound. So they, they are a little bit more flexible that way. Additionally, they can be made quite small because you don't have to worry about a diaphragm as in like a speaker and very small magnets. They are a charge plate design, so again, they can be quite small. So when you're getting into headset style microphones or hanging style microphones, uh, that can be advantageous to you. One thing to look at uh, additionally to microphones is the polar patterns. This can be quite key. There are a lot of different uh, microphones out there. Uh, we manufacture various handheld microphones, all with their own characteristics. So this can be very important to look at, you know, uh, to decide which microphone is going to fit your application. Polar patterns. We use polar pattern graphs to illustrate the mic pickup characteristics. These round plots show the relative sensitivity of the microphone in dBs, that's decibels, as it rotates in front of a fixed sound field. So in a circle, it rotates. Uh, plot of the microphone polar response are usually shown in, with various frequencies as well. So uh, from 10K high frequency to maybe 800 hertz down to 20 hertz. So again, these characteristics can change depending on the frequencies we're looking at. Uh, the most common directional microphones exhibit a heart-shaped polar pattern. Uh, as a result, they are called cardioid microphones. Let's take a look at some of these plots and give you more of a visual of uh, how they work. An omnidirectional. Uh, an omnidirectional microphone uh, picks up sound from just about every direction. Uh, equal. They work well and uh, well pointed away from the subject as pointed towards. So again, if you look at the round circle around, if you were in front of the microphone, you're going to be picked up quite equally to behind the microphone. So all the way around 360 degrees, it is going to pick up the, uh, uh, your speech or whatever it is you're trying to listen to. Uh, however, the best Omni mod uh, models tend to become a little bit more directional high frequencies. So one thing to keep in mind uh, uh, with them. So again, may seem a little bit duller uh, from speaking to the rear at the higher frequencies. The size of the microphone has a direct bearing on the pattern of the mic, most notably at higher frequencies, as I mentioned. Therefore, the smaller the mic body, the closer the mic must be to full Omni at full frequency. So one thing to keep in mind when looking at an Omni microphone is, and we'll get a little bit uh, into it more in the, uh, a little bit down the road here, is feedback. So when you look at an audio microphone, if you're holding that microphone up to your mouth and you may have a speaker in front of you on a stage, maybe in a church or something like that, keep in mind that that microphone is picking up my mouth, my speech, but also it could be picking up behind it. So it could be picking up a speaker in front of it. So in applications application where there are monitors or any speakers near uh, firing towards your, your, your speaking position, Omni may not be the best idea to use. A lot of times Omnis are used in lavalier style applications where they're you know, connected on your chest because they'll pick up in front of you below and if the speaker gets turned a little bit, it's still going to pick up that full 360 degree pattern around you. So again, Omni directions are good in some applications, but depending whether their speaker is firing towards you, they could uh, be a little bit troublesome. Unidirectional microphones. 
directional, mi directional microphones are specifically designed to respond best to sound from the front and reject other angles depending on the design pattern. Uh, the directional ability is usually the result of external openings and internal passages in the microphone that allow sound to react uh, from both sides of the diaphragm in a carefully controlled manner. Sound arriving from the front of the microphone will aid diaphragm motion back and forth, while sound arriving from the side or rear will cancel diaphragm motion. The proper understanding and use of the directional microphones and their polar patterns can reduce or eliminate feedback, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in, increase isolation in sensitive miking applications. So if we look at this particular uh, microphone, we'll see it picks up around the front uh, quite well and a little bit to the side, but as you get to the rear of the microphone, it doesn't pick up so well. So again, if you've got any kind of micro or speaker in front of you that could be facing towards you, it's going to reject a lot of that sound. So what that means is that the microphone's not going to pick it up, go back in the amplifier, amplify that, and back at the speakers with creates a closed loop, which is what feedback is. It's a loop of uh, picking up a sound and uh, reamplifying it through a system. So a little bit more advantageous to you use a directional or cardioid style microphone. Let me give a few more pictures. Uh, these pictures kind of show what you see in, in a specification sheet uh, of a microphone. So if you look at, let's say, you know, this top microphone, an awning type microphone, you get the uh, center and head of the microphone right in the center, and you'll see the pickup pattern around in a 360 degree manner. As you go around that 360 degree, you'll see it drops off a little bit compared to the circles around. Each part or segment of this circle represents 6 dB. So in essence, you're going to lose from the front of the microphone to potentially the side, you're losing 6 dB. So, you know, that's fairly significant. So it does drop off you know, a little bit around it, but you still get fairly good pickup pattern in the rear. So that's why it could be detrimental in a feedback situation if you do have audio uh, facing towards your microphone. If you look at the bottom graph, uh, cardio cell microphone, you see definitely the drop off in the rear of the microphone. So you've got at least one, two, three, four times 6 dB, so a very substantial dropout. So this is going to be more of an advantage, uh, advantageous microphone to use if there is audio firing towards the microphone. So how do they sound? Uh, again, an Omni microphone will capture a more ambient sound. Again, around a choir, on your chest, things and applications like that. They're going to catch sound 360 degrees around uh, in the field. A cardioid will capture more of a direct sound, so great for vocals or instrument uh, applications. Uh, there are various styles of hypercardioid too. What a hypercardioid is, it's a tighter cardioid, so it's a little bit more directional too. A lot of podium microphones tend to be a cardioid style, so it'll pick up directly in around your face so they're not picking up sounds around to the left and right of you. So there are variances of, you know, a cardioid and an omni amount style, sorry, omni pickup style microphone. Feedback. So we talked a little bit about feedback. Um, again, feedback is when, again, a microphone, uh, you speak into a microphone, it transmits that sound into an amplifier, comes out the speakers, and again, your, your, your microphone hears that audio from a speaker and reamplifies it. So you're creating that loop. Uh, a lot of attention must be paid to, again, of course, uh, placement of a microphone in and around speakers. So a lot of times you don't want, to, again, a speaker behind you if you're pointing a microphone towards a choir or something like that in a church or a presentation pulpit, something like that, as well as if you have a, a microphone and a speaker directly above your seating area. Because again, you're going to speak into that microphone, it's going to get amplified, thrown back out the speaker system, and then it's going to be picked up again by the microphone. So that comes on to the next point, which is, does the mic see the speaker? You want to minimize the effect of a microphone seeing a speaker, just to reduce that feedback. Uh, Use mics with, uh, with rejection at the side and back uh, of the microphone. Again, that's going to reduce the chance of feedback. Also advantageous is reduce the distance between the source and the microphone. The closer you can speak to a microphone, the better. Usually you want to keep anywhere from four to six inches uh, from the head of the microphone to your lips when you're speaking. The more uh, distance you have between the microphone and what you're looking to pick up, whether it's speech or whether it's instrument, the more the, the, the micro needs to be potentially turned up in the gain structure, and you're going to pick up a lot more ambient sounds around you, therefore increase the chance of feedback. 
So you really want to look at proper placement of the microphone, uh, proper placements of speakers around you, uh, choosing a microphone that has a pickup pattern that is advantageous to your scenario. Keep in mind that, you know, again, if you're trying to pick up a choir or a group of singers, that you may definitely want to use an Omni-style microphone, but be aware of any speakers that are locally to that area because, again, that Omni microphone is going to pick up those speakers as well. Um, I guess now there's two types of transmission types uh, when it comes to wireless audio. There's RF and IR. I kind of took these uh, defini definitions out of Wikipedia. They're kind of uh, techy, but again, RF is radio frequency at a rate of oscillation in the range of 30K to uh, 300 gigahertz. Lots of uh, different technologies work uh, in this range from cordless phones uh, to radio stations. Uh, again, wireless microphones, two-way walkie-talkies, all work in this RF field. So it is, you know, an oscillation of sound. So again, think of it like a cordless phone or something like that with various power and various, uh, uh, again, frequency characteristics. When it comes to RF, uh, the lower, uh, the, the kilohertz range, generally the, more, uh, the stronger it is in its ability to penetrate through walls and obstructions. The higher the frequency range, you get better distance, but again, it's more susceptible to be stopped by environments, like again, walls, doors, glass, things like that. Primarily, RF is, is used primarily in performance applications, churches, and things like that. But there are emerging technologies that are starting to take hold, uh, specifically in school applications. Uh, one of these is infrared technology. An infrared technology is electromagnetic radiation. IR is similar to uh, visible light, but with a longer wavelength. So I, infrared, everybody is fairly familiar with this. Uh, your remote controls on your TVs uh, and stereos all work off IR. It's got its uh, advantages. Uh, one advantage is that it is contained to a room. Uh, if you look at RF, you could have uh, uh, an RF system working, let's say, in uh, downtown Calgary or Toronto or Halifax or a metropolitan area like that, and there's lots of RF noise around you. So you are susceptible to external noise uh, being picked up by an RF application. So you're, all of a sudden your, your wireless microphone could get some interference in there. Uh, when it comes to IR, um, you're closed off by your room. So again, IR transmissions are not going through walls and glass and things like that. They are contained within four walls. So you don't have that susceptibility to external noise uh, from other, other sources. So that's quite advantageous with IR. If you look at it in the reverse, again, IR signal is not going outside of your room. So that gives you more of a, a secure kind of application where no one's picking up noise or no one's picking up your transmission outside your walls. Again, it comes in a little bit advantageous where if you're putting multiple systems in multiple rooms in a school environment, you don't have to worry about picking units that have frequencies that don't affect each other. So there's some advantages of both. Uh, generally, IR is point of source. So again, if something gets in the way, whether it's noise, fog, a uh, physical object, it can get cut off a little bit quicker than RF. So in, in, a, in an application of live performance, churches, schools, performing areas like theaters or stages, RF is quite advantageous. But in presentation rooms, classrooms, IR definitely has its, uh, its advantages. Next, we'll go on to uh, receiver types in, in the wireless world. When we look at uh, various receivers, one thing comes into play, and that's a number of channels. Uh, so a number of channels allows a number of systems to be used in one installation. Uh, additionally, with more channels, you can move away from interfering channels. So there's a whole range of wireless products, and we'll get into you know, which offer, what type of frequency uh, flexibility a little bit later. But if you have, a, let's say, a wireless system that offers one RF channel, um, that's generally going to be in the economy kind of version of a product offering. Now, if you have an application in a church and you've got one channel of RF, if something does come in or move into that neighborhood that starts to interfere with that RF microphone and that RF frequency, you're kind of stuck. You can't choose and change to a different RF channel. So you definitely, you know, it's important to look at the system, uh, where you're using it, and how many channels it does allow you to select. Uh, it could be a system that allows four channels, 16, uh, 64. It's very important to look at that flexibility. 
Um, another thing comes into play is how many wireless systems are going to be uh, installed in an application. Is it simply one wireless microphone, or does, is it a live performing application where you might have you know, 10, 12, 14, 16 wireless systems all working in one installation? In that application, you'd have to look at a, a wireless system that offers a lot more uh, frequency uh, flexibility. So definitely keep that in mind when choosing the, the proper kit uh, and wireless system. Beyond that, uh, you know, looking at numbers of channels is important, but how receivers work uh, and the types of them is, is also important. There's basically three types of receivers. Uh, there's diversity, there's space diversity, and true diversity. We'll get in, in the next slide how they work, but one thing to, to kind of think about is how wireless systems work. They are waves flowing through the air, uh, and again, just as speaker waves send out sound uh, and reflect off surfaces uh, and create phasing problems, the same thing can happen in the wireless world. So again, you're, you're transmitting from your handheld microphone to a receiver through a room. It could be bouncing off hard floors, going through walls, and various things like that before it hits the wireless receiver. So there could be dropouts and different problems that can be occurred. Think of it like your uh, cordless micro or your cordless phone in your house. As you walk through different areas of your home, you get a little bit of buzz, distortion, sometimes dropout. The same inherent problems uh, can come to play with RF products as well. There's ways to get around it and tell technology to fix these problems. It's one, th one thing to be aware of that these problems may and do exist. We'll start off with diversity systems. Uh, these are more of the uh, economic systems uh, and receivers and kind of the starting platform. Uh, they have two antennas, which are usually physically connected to each other uh, on the unit, as the diagram below shows. Uh, this system has one tuner, so one receiver, uh, directly uh, attached to this antenna. These types of interlevel systems can be prone to multicasting and dropout and noise. Uh, there's no special processing going on here to reduce this situation. So as you see, you do have two potential uh, antennas on a unit connected to a tuner. So the one advantage over one antenna is, again, it's picking up waves from two different points, and depending on phasing and delays uh, of signal getting to the antenna, you could, you're, you're picking up you know, a stronger signal. But there's no processing happening if something does get in the way of the, the transmission being, uh, being sent. So we get into a new technology, and a patented technology from, from TOA is space diversity. In a space uh, diversity system, you have two antennas, well, which are present, uh, present, but what they are unique. In between the antennas, there is a comparator circuit set between the antenna. Uh, this circuit monitors the RF level on one of the antennas, and once that level decreases uh, below a specific threshold, the antenna automatically switches uh, signal to the other antenna. So it monitors antenna A and then sees that that's getting below a, a specified threshold then shift to the second antenna. So that could be, again, you walking through a door if you compare it to a home analogy, but it could be walking in different parts uh, of a stage or in a church where all of a sudden there is some interference in there from other RF uh, local to your installation, and it will automatically switch back and forth. Uh, the overall result is a much more reliable system than a non-diversity system. Uh, but the one thing to keep aware of is there is blind switching. When, you, when the unit does switch from, let's say, antenna A to antenna B, it doesn't know the state of antenna B. So antenna B, B could be below the threshold and the signal level on antenna A, therefore it's switching back and forth. So it's kind of what we call blind switching. Overall, it does offer a better coverage and better reliability than a, a non-diversity system or non-space diversity system, but there could be some issues related to that. The solution to that is when we get into our higher end uh, systems, mid to high, which is true diversity. Uh, and this is something that is much better uh, and works quite reliably. reliably. Uh, true diversity systems take us to the next level. There are two unconnected and separate antennas in the system. Each antenna is connected to its own tuner, which basically senses uh, you know, the signal at each tuner level. That circuitry that we talked before on the comparator side of things is at the tuner. So in this particular scenario, a tuner is looking at the antenna and listening and looking at the signal that, it, that it's receiving from that antenna. In the circuitry behind the tuner, 
or receiver, it's also monitoring the second antenna. And it's looking, saying, which is stronger? Depending which one is stronger, it's going to switch to which one it's using. That gives you a very reliable system because, first of all, again, uh, you have two tuners picking up signal uh, with antennas that are mounted in different locations on the chassis, but it also knows when it does switch what it's switching to. Is it a better uh, uh, level of signal, or if it's less, it won't make that change. Also to mention, when you look at diversity systems, some people make the mistake of saying, okay, there's two tuners in there, I can use two microphones at the same time. This is not the case. Although there are two tuners in a true diversity uh, uh, system, it's still one microphone, two receiver box. So keep that in mind as well. So when you get into uh, you know, scenarios where you've got to make sure that that system does not fail, you don't get dropped out, you know, it's hard to compete with, you know, with anything but a true diversity system because you're going to really keep the, the potential of dropouts to a minimal. So we're going to stop there. That kind of covers a lot of the technology behind it. Some of it, you know, is very important in, in choosing from an intro level to a live audio uh, situation. But we'll open up the lines here if anybody does have any questions on the technology behind. Uh, and definitely uh, let me know what questions you have and we'll answer those. And then once we're done there, we'll go into, I guess, the product offering and how uh, the, 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 the topics we've covered so far uh, plays into our current product role. Okay, everybody. So what I've done is I've unmuted all of your phone lines. So you can, actually, I'm just going to open up the computer's chat box here, too. So you can send a uh, a question either to uh, ask me your questions, or you can send it to TOA Canada Corporation, or you can speak directly to us. And uh, after the brief question and answer period, Peter's going to go into a little bit more of the tech side of the wireless microphone system. Nope. Can everybody hear me there? Any yeah. questions at all? Nope. Nope. We're good? Okay. Uh, if anything does come up as I go through, I guess, a product offering, we'll have a little uh, time at the end of the presentation to go through, uh, you know, maybe tech related to the product offering. So definitely don't hesitate to, to either type in a question or let me know what you do have. Just give us a second. I'm going to mute everybody again. It just keeps us nice and quiet on the phone lines here. Were they not seen that before? No. <laughs> I had a feeling with that. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go into it with, I guess, the TOA uh, wireless line offering. Oh, how do I click for it? i got to click for this now. Okay, so we're going to start off uh, with the WS200 uh, and 300 series. Uh, these are RF products. Uh, this is probably the beginning point of what we do offer, so more of our entry-level economy-style product. A little overview of this line. Uh, they are sold in uh, pre-configured kits, so the kits will either include a handheld microphone and receiver, a uh, lavalier-style microphone uh, and receiver, or a uh, headset-style microphone. Each of these units, uh, there's four selectable frequencies, and there are various banks of bands available too. But again, four selectable frequencies to choose for in this particular line. As I just mentioned, there's handheld lavalier, uh, which would clip onto your chest, something like that, and a headset that would go uh, behind the ear. There are balanced and unbalanced uh, outputs uh, from each unit. As a rule of thumb, you get about 10 hours battery life uh, out of the transmitters. There is an adjustable squelch. Uh, what that comes down to is certain noise in the air to be able to keep that noise for below. So again, you know, it'll only allow signal from when speaking to come through, and then below that, you know, gets uh, cut off. So that's what a squelch circuitry does. Uh, when it comes in the range, uh, you know, it's hard to say. You can get three to you know 120 meters of range. It's really hard to say. A lot of people do ask that question. You know, what kind of distance can I get in this wireless microphone? Uh, you know, what comes in play is again, you know, where is this mic being installed? Uh, other things like, you know, walls in, in between. Is it in a highly congested downtown core area? It is really hard to give you a, a pinpoint exact information, but it's a rule of thumb uh, when it comes to, you know, the distance you can get out of a wireless microphone. Uh, between the three versions in the WS200 and 300 series, uh, first we have the WS200. Uh, the WS200 is a dynamic microphone, handheld kit, uh, with a cardioid-style microphone. Moving over to the WS300, uh, this is a condenser-style microphone. 
Uh, and it is an omni mount version, so that's a pickup pattern. So for your chest mount, it's a little bit more sensitive. It can pick up towards you know your mouth because again, you're speaking out. The microphone is below, and it's picking up in an omni fashion. Uh, we also have the WS300L. Uh, actually, I think that should be an H, uh, which in regards is a condenser style microphone and a cardio. So again, that's going to sit to the left of your mouth and pick up that uh, speech from that that way. Stepping up from there, uh, we go into our uh, a quite popular 500 series microphone as well, still an RF based system. Uh, there are kits available for this system as well as individual components. So you can mix and match certain receivers with certain microphone styles or pick a, you know, a predetermined, pre-configured kit. You have that flexibility. There are 16 channel units or 16 times 4 channel units, so 64 channels. Available within the 500, or sorry, the 5000 series. There are handheld, lavalier styles, handset, as well as aerobic mic options. Within the series, there are space and true diversity units available, as we mentioned earlier, and we'll go through those a little bit later. A lot, one advantage too in the 500 or the 5000 series is there is channel searching uh, functionality in some of the receivers. And what that channel searching functionality allows you to do is hit a button, it'll search through any available, uh, well, all potential channels that the receiver can pick, and basically rules out the bad ones and say, okay, these are your strong channels within, within this application or within this environment. So it's a nice way to easily uh, decipher what channels you should lock into uh, in an installation. When it comes to total amount of units being installed in one application, uh, the 5000 series will allow 16 units used simultaneously in an installation. Again, we got 10 hour battery length uh, up to 120 meter operation distance. Uh, you do have mic sensitivity control on the microphone itself. It's almost like a, a print that allows you to give a little bit more pickup uh, when, you, when, when you're maybe you have, you're trying to pick up something that's maybe a little soft spoken or maybe it's an instrument or something like that that is quite quiet. It allows you just that pickup to make it a little bit stronger. Think of it like a mic, small mic volume control on each individual microphone. Uh, there's also a commander circuitry uh, which built into this, uh, the, this, these systems which minimalizes ambient noise, drops it out, so it really uh, focuses on the attended sort, which it may be spoken word, speech, singing, or instruments. Also within uh, this line, uh, a few of the receivers allow uh, removable antennas. This will allow for uh, remote antennas in the future, and we'll get into that as we go forward. So starting with, uh, I guess, re, uh, my misspelling receivers, and I type revivers, uh, but we'll go beyond that. Um, there's three different versions. Uh, there's the WT5800 and 5805. First thing to be aware of the difference between these two is the uh, 5800 is a true diversity system, and again, the 5805 is a space diversity system. So the 5800 has two tuners, built into the box, and the 5805, uh, it should be, has one tuner but a comparator circuit. So that's the difference between the two. They both offer uh, channel scanning functions, 64 channels uh, to select from, detachable antennas, front LCD uh, displays so you can see your frequencies you're picking, your channel scanner functions, uh, signal strength, things like that. Uh, the, it does offer squelch control, and there's both XLR and quarter inch outputs on the rear of the unit. Going over to the, uh, the 5810 uh, with the WT4800, I guess first thing I'll explain with that is the WT5810 is basically a microphone chassis. So alone it doesn't function that well at all. Basically you have to populate that with the WT4800. The WT4800 is a receiver module that slides in the back of the unit. So you can input one receiver module into the WT5810, and that'll give you one microphone you can use in that box. You can add an additional WT4800, which will allow you to have two tuner modules per box. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can actually, in a one half rack space unit, you can have two functioning uh, wireless units. Uh, it does offer space diversity. Uh, again, as I mentioned, two receivers per channel. 
One neat little function here is you can have separate or mixed outputs. The advantage of that is, you know, if you have separate outputs, you get two channels, which would take up two channels of your input uh, device. So if it's a mixer or preamp, uh, something like that, it would take up two channels with, when you're using separate outputs. There's also a mixing output. Well, this is nice if you're limited to, to the space you have. Maybe you have a small uh, all-in-one mixer amplifier and you only have one channel left. Uh, the mix function will allow you to combine these two wireless outputs into one channel. Uh, therefore, you can get two mics into in one uh, channel on a, on, a, on a mixer or on a, a preamplifier. So sometimes, you know, that comes in quite handy. 16 channels available to choose from, as well as uh, detached antennas, squelch control, and XLR and quarter inch outputs. Moving to the 4820, uh, this is a space diversity system as well. Uh, it does allow have channel uh, scanner capabilities, 16 channels to choose from, squelch control, XLR and quarter inch outputs. Uh, this is available in kits, so there's a handheld kit, a lavalier kit, and headset kit. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is these are permanently attached antennas. So when it comes down to uh, adding maybe remote antennas, uh, if you're going over a great distance, and which we'll touch uh, a little bit down the road, uh, this does not allow that flexibility. So when we get into microphone options, uh, we'll start off again in the handheld, still in the RF world here. Uh, we've got the WM5270, more of a performance microphone, so it could be used you know, for recording speech, uh, vocal singing, as well as instruments. Uh, it's a dynamic style microphone, uh, cardioid style pickup, and a maximum of 64 channels. All of these microphones work off uh, a an, uh, AA battery. We get into WM5220, more of a performance style, but we switch to a condenser style microphone. So a little bit more sensitive. So you don't have to be right up on the microphone. You can have a little bit further from you, uh, as long as you know feedback permits. Uh, and it's a little bit more sensitive to pick up, you know, any kind of whether it's vocals or an instrument uh, in a live uh, application. It is cardioid, so same pickup uh, as the 5270, but 16 channels on this unit. Uh, WM4200, again, performance style, uh, speech or vocal singing, dynamic microphone, cardioid microphone, 64 channels. Uh, so it's very similar to the 5270, uh, but if you were to look at the spec sheets of the two, where they change is the pickup pattern and the cardioid pickup pattern. So there are some uh, uh, difference in how they pick up side project, uh, rejection as well as rear projection in that cardioid. Like I mentioned earlier, a cardioid pickup is similar to a heart shape, but they can change. It could be a little bit more narrow or wider style heart. So there's some advantages of, uh, of both of them. Uh, the VM4210, generally it's used more for speech application, spoken word. It's a dynamic unit. It is cardioid pickup and 16 channels. Uh, moving to the WM4220, speech applications, condenser style, but still a cardioid pickup pattern, 16 channels, and a AA battery for that unit. Uh, moving to lavalier and head-worn uh, options. Again, these are still gearing towards the 5000 series of microphones. We have the WM5320. This is a lav style microphone, so it comes with a nice belt clip, or sorry, little tie clip, clip onto a shirt or anything like that, hanging just below. Again, uh, you know, your, your, your chin as close as you can. Uh, it's always good to try to face the microphone up, uh, and one thing to pay attention, if it's shooting away, they are on the mount style, but it is still a little bit better to have it facing directly up. Use more for speech, generally lav style microphones are not used for singing or anything like that. As mentioned, it's an omni mount, so it's going to pick up, or sorry, omni pickup pattern. It's going to pick all the way around you. So again, uh, with that in consideration, it's picking in front, behind, above, and below. So they are more susceptible to feedback. It is a condenser, so it is a little bit more sensitive, which is key when the microphone is located below your chin, below your mouth. You're not directly speaking in the microphone, so it will uh, have some advantages when when picking up speech. On this particular unit, 64 channels, working off a AA battery. WM5320H, this is a headset style microphone used for speech. You could use it for singing and performing as well. It is a condenser style, cardioid pickup pattern, 
in 64 channels. So this will mount behind your ears, behind your head, and mount directly in front of your mouth. Uh, if at all possible, it's always advantageous to try to use a headset style uh, over a lavalier. Just because it is cardioid, it's going to move that microphone right in front of your mouth. It's going to give you a better clarity, less chance of feedback. But if, you know, if preference is I don't want a headset microphone, you know, then you can jump to an Ani. But you know, if at all possible, there are many advantages of going with a headset microphone, especially when it comes into feedback issues. Uh, we also have the 5270A. This is a more of a specialized microphone. It's an aerobics microphone. So it's meant for any kind of application where you may get a little bit uh, warm and sweaty and running around in a gym application or maybe a community center or something like that. So it's uh, less susceptible to, to moisture and sweat, things like that. Used more for speech. It is condenser style, so it's quite sensitive. Uh, cardioid pickup pattern and 64 channels. Again, all off uh, AA batteries. So that concludes the 5000 series. We're going to jump up to the Trantec series. This is our higher end of wireless microphones. Excuse me. The Trantec style um, is a true diversity system. So again, dual receivers uh, built into the one box. Again, only one microphone per box, uh, but it does have the dual tuners. Very flexible, it can be used for performance and speech. So this can be used, you know, in a church, in a school, live on stage, in an arena. Very uh, flexible in how it's used. Uh, lavalier or uh, handheld versions. Uh, there's 30 megahertz channel spacing, so there's a good chunk in between the channels to allow that if you're mo running multiple systems in an application, that there's enough frequency in between those channels that they don't interfere. Um, it is a cast metal housing on the handheld unit as well as a transmitter emitter pack, so it is more robust. It uh, can handle the odd drop. Of course, nobody wants a microphone to be dropped, but if it is going to be dropped, you know, metal is a little bit more susceptible, a little bit tougher than plastic, so they can hold up a little bit better. Uh, LCD display uh, for programming, seeing channel strength, battery strength, things like that. Uh, it also offers easy channel programming via an IR data link. So what that means, if you do a channel search, uh, which this does offer as well, and you find the strongest channel, you can hit a button on the transmitter on the microphone, and it will automatically set both units to be the, on the same channel. So easy to program, nice and flexible that way. Uh, one thing the other uh, series didn't offer is a PC software. Uh, this comes packaged with a PC software that you can put on your system, and a USB cord connects to the back of the receiver, and you can sense things like, you know, RF signal strength. So you can know if all of a sudden, you know, something's interfering in your area and see that and change that. It'll also allow you to see battery strength. So you can notice, okay, this battery wireless system is really starting to get a little bit low. Maybe you got a defective battery or someone forgot to change the batteries and they're getting quite low. You can see that uh, and prevent any, you know, lack of transmission before it happens. So you click about, switch the microphones uh, to something that has a stronger battery, and away you go does have uh, mic sensitivity, sensitivity control on both the handheld unit and the transmitter pack. Uh, XLR, quarter inch, uh, and uh, XLR, sorry, XLR and quarter inch outputs, mic or line level. So potentially, uh, you know, if you don't have a preamp, you know, this microphone, this unit could go directly into the line level input. Depending on the, uh, the strength of your line level input, you may not need any preamp at all. So there is a, uh, an option here of going directly into you know, a line level input if you don't have any microphone inputs available. There are 240 channels available. This does not ma mean that you can have 240 units in install, although it would be you know, quite the install. Uh, but it uh, will allow you to get uh, 24 units in one application. Because again, uh, there has to be space between each channel. Um, there's always going to be you know, channels that are used up, interfered with, uh, that are going to be trouble-wise. So you'll see those when you do perform a channel scanning when you first install a system like this. So, but flexible, like uh, the flexibility of having 24 channels, you can be co feel confident in an install that you can get 24 channels working simultaneously, uh, which is nice. Uh, where's a one AA battery, and these are available in kits. And I think the next slide might show some of the kits. Uh, either that or maybe the slide after. Uh, we do see it some here. On this next slide, on the left, we can kind of see the monitoring software here. Uh, so you see RF level, so it's showing you the RF level of each wireless system. Uh, beside it, uh, you've got A and B. So these are the two wireless tuners 
or receivers that I mentioned earlier in a true diversity uh, scenario. Uh, so you can see that both of them are quite strong. Uh, you can also notice the VU meter uh, and additionally the battery level here. So you can see this battery level is getting a little bit weak. This one's quite strong. So you may want to have this performer switch to another wireless system or something like that. So this is, you know, nice software to have in a live application where you don't want to have any dropout. The kits, predetermined kits are over here to the side. So whether it's a uh, lavalier style or a handheld style, you get that component, you get the receiver style. Also included are rack mount kits that allow you single or double rack mount uh, extension cables to mount the antennas outside of the rack. One thing I should mention though is, is you gotta pay nice attention Two rack mounting wireless products, and I have seen many issues in the past where you know the wireless receivers are put into the rack, and in the rack are the antennas in the middle of the rack. So already you've got a lot of electronics inside a rack blocking the distance and the potential reception of a wireless microphone. So definitely try to get the, the, the receivers outside of that rack to increase your distance. Also included, as mentioned, is the software pack as well. So a nice kit, a nice reliable kit uh, when you don't want you know, to take any chances with dropout and things like that. As I did mention a little bit earlier, um, some of the wireless microphones uh, in the 5000 series as well as the Trantec, they have removable antennas. That could be A, just to, uh, to remotely locate the antennas outside of a rack, but one could be to add uh, an antenna distribution system. So we offer an antenna distribution system, uh, which consists of the WD4800 and the YW4500. So the WD4800, this is your antenna. Um, and because in a diversity system you have two antennas, if you're uh, designing an antenna distribution system, it'll consist of two of these antennas and one of your main distribution uh, units. So the antennas wire back to this uh, distributor, and you can actually run four wireless receivers off one of these distribution units. So if it was, uh, let's say it was in, uh, let's go with a, a, a church and, or a school, and the electronics head and equipment was not located right in the theater area or right in, in the church area, maybe located downstairs. Well, when you're located downstairs, You've got walls to go through, so, you know, floors to go through, a lot of interference. Your, your distance of transmission has got to be cut. You can locate these antennas remotely in the same room that you're using the wireless systems are, uh, and they would go back to this distributor, which would be down in your head and rack, and your receivers connect to this. So you'll see that you'll have antenna outputs here. So one for, uh, for tune, or antenna A, one for t antenna B, as well as... You know, it can uh, allow you to do four receivers. So there's antenna in for each one of the 4800s, antenna in for the B, as well as one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four feeds for your receivers. Uh, it also uh, allows you to power your receivers off this unit as opposed to wall warts. So each receiver in a rack needs its own power source. But if you have, you know, an antenna distributor such as the 4500, you can power all four uh, receivers off this one unit. So when you're worried about distance, uh, you know, in a performing environment, you know, a lot of times it may be an arena or something like that. Adding, you know, RF distribution is quite important to uh, to increasing your range. You know, it's all dependent on where your head and equipment is located. But something to be aware of, something you definitely don't want to uh, underlook or overlook uh, in a design, especially if you're at the stage of infrastructure as well, where you're running wires and things like that. You know, maybe you may not need this, but it's best to run the wire ahead of time than after if you do have some RF issues down the road. Uh, we talked a lot about RF microphones. We'll quickly go over our offering in infrared microphones. And again, general uh, reference, IR microphones are not best suited for live performance like theater, stage, things like that, because you're moving around, and line of sight is quite key, and that could ca you know, cause cutouts. So, uh, but one advantage, again, they are not affected by RF interference. So you don't have to worry about noise and things like that in an environment. So you go, don't get into all the diversity, non-diversity, things like that. 
Uh, you don't get into frequency scanning, those kind of functionalities. It's not really needed. They are more of a secure wireless solution in that you know no one has an infrared radio that they can listen to. First of all, I don't have any IR radio. Secondly, is that the infrared information is not getting outside of four walls. So it's not getting out of a corporate four wall presentation room as well as it's not getting out of a classroom creating noise. So it is more of a secure uh, solution, especially, especially when you get into the corporate side of things where you know, there may be sensitive information being discussed. Uh, this is quite an, an important factor. There are RF uh, secure systems out there, but they are very, very pricey uh, when you compare it to an IR solution. So definitely be aware of that as potential. Great for schools. Uh, lots of uh, advantages when it comes to school because you have multiple classrooms potentially for voice lift. Uh, and again, you don't have to worry about frequency correlation. You can have one of these units in each classroom. Uh, a teacher, per se, could grab their own you know, signed out, allocated transmitter uh, microphone and walk into any classroom and it's going to function perfectly. Uh, they are quite lightweight. Uh, so not too heavy in K-12 to type of scenarios with younger students picking up the microphone and wanting to speak. So, you know, that, that's definitely a strong area where we see a lot of growth uh, with our IR microphones. Quickly run through uh, the offering within, in, within the IR microphone product line. We've got the uh, IR200M. Again, this is meant for speech, uh, nice form fitting, uh, very lightweight. Uh, it has dual IR windows, so on the front and the back, depending how someone may be holding it, uh, the information is going to get to the wireless transmitter. So one thing to keep in mind, the IR microphone wants to see the transmitters that I'm going to speak uh, about a little bit uh, as we go through here. So it's a more of a line of sight technology. It's not a standard antenna that we're used to seeing. It's a line of sight uh, technology. So we have the IR300M. Uh, this is more for speech. Uh, it hangs... Uh, like a lanyard uh, around your neck so a student could wear it, a teacher can wear it. They don't have to have a handheld microphone in front of them or a lavalier style or headset style microphone. Uh, so there is a microphone built in the top of this pack which will pick up quite nicely. But if they do want to add a lavalier style or a headset uh, microphone, there is a jack so you can connect directly to that as well. Uh, you have your IR receiver box uh, which is a 702T. This will allow you two channels. So again, it's geared towards uh, classrooms. You could have uh, two uh, transmitter pack or two handheld packs, or sorry, handheld microphones, or combination of both in a classroom. So it will allow you two channels, so two microphones. Think of it that way. Uh, there are, uh, there is an IR700D. Uh, this is a distribution unit. So depending on the size of the room and the layout of the room, you may need different receivers or IR receivers which are over here uh, and we can help you design that and pick out how many you need but in the larger rooms you may need more than one or there may be obstructions depending on the ceiling style where you may need you know one ceiling uh, transceiver on one side of the room one on the other we can help you out with that but you can have up to 16 total receivers in a room so that's quite a large room if you need 16 generally a classroom one or two is got to be you know sufficient to operate quite reliably so there are various transceivers, uh, sorry, uh, receivers available for infrared. There's wall mount in the uh, 500 series. There is a ceiling dome style microphone uh, receiver uh, in the 510R, as well as a wall or mic stand if you wanted a portable system, which is quite nice, uh, which is the 520R. Uh, one thing uh, is advantageous too in the full IR uh, series is there is an IR200BC, which is a dedicated charger system. So it's one charger kit uh, can fit, you know, two, uh, you know, lav or, or uh, lanyard style microphones, or uh, as well as handheld or combination of both can sit into here. Uh, you are protected in this system. Because the, the, there, it does. Sorry, there are options for uh, rechargeable batteries that you purchase. But let's say in a classroom application, a teacher decides, oh well, the battery's dead. I'm going to put a regular double A battery or something in there. In other uh, uh, systems available out there on the marketplace, there's no protective circuitry, so you could, in essence, damage the charger, the microphone, or explode the battery. 
there is circuitry in this uh, 200 BC, which will basically cut it off, so it's not going to even attempt to uh, charge anything other than the, the, the specified rechargeable battery. So there's a little bit of a safeguard in there, which is nice. Also, if you are done a presentation in a school, just pick up the microphone, go put it over in the charger pack. That way you're ensured that every time you need to present or use it, it is fully charged. So that kind of covers the IR side of things. Uh, we're seeing lots of growth in that area, and we're starting to run out of time here. So just a little bit of a conclusion here uh, to over, go over a few points. Uh, in designing audio system, uh, one thing to keep in mind is you're taking lots of time to select the proper speakers for coverage, proper mixer, amplifier, all the head end. One thing to, to pay attention to, and I've seen this in numerous uh, installations, uh, and it's unfortunate, is all this may be in vain if you don't select the proper microphone for your application. If it is, you know, a presentation room, a church, uh, a school gym or something like that, uh, you know, Tens of thousands of dollars may have been, you know, uh, invested for the hand and equipment, but if you go short or, or don't pick, pick the proper wireless microphone, all that head and equipment becomes idle because, again, you're getting dropout in the presentation. So your effect is lost. What you're trying to portray to the crowd, whether it's in church application or presentation application, gets lost. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's sometimes you, you see you know, when it comes into the budget dollars that people say, well, we'll, cut, we'll go with a more inexpensive microphone. But really, is it, is, is it worth losing your presentation and what you're looking to get by? So definitely pay a lot of attention to wire, wireless microphones, uh, where they're being used, how they're being mounted, the style to use, and the distance, and where equipment is being mounted. You know, pay some consideration to that because the last thing you want is to have a beautifully well-designed system and a microphone that just doesn't quite cut it. Uh, when it comes to that, you know, definitely don't uh, feel, don't, don't hesitate to contact you know TOA Technical Support Department or your local RSM. Uh, we can help you choose the right microphone for your application and make sure they don't you know miss any of the bits and pieces uh, that are needed.